Today we got the next book in the Keeper of the Lost City series, Flashback, by Shannon Messenger herself, and well, let's get right into it. So, first off, what is going on? So, last book we ended off with Alvar with lost memories, and him not knowing who is Alvar and what he has done. And basically, he kind of goes, yo, it's not my fault, so can I live with my family at every Glen, and can I, like, live there so I can prove my innocence that... You know, I'm not, I'm not a psychopath murderer person. And everyone kind of, there's a big argument and they're like, maybe there's something in every Glen that's never seen want to put him there and stuff like that. However, the argument, they lose the argument and Alvar is put in every Glen. Then, after that, Fitz is really, really upset and Sophie goes to comfort him and they're at a training area. And then they get attacked by the never seen. And a bunch of them come, and there's a physneopath, and there's a shade, and the shade attacks them with what's called shadow flux, or pure darkness. And it apparently does extreme damage to you because Sophie and Fitz spend the next, like, million years trying to recover. Sophie managed to press her panic switch in the middle of the fight, and they got rescued by Dex and a bunch of goblins. And after that, Sander is quite traumatized, and he's, he, he thinks he needs to quit and stuff like that, but Sophie's like, no, you need to, like be my, my side because I only trust you and he's like okay fine and he makes this team of five different species protecting Sophie and this team of bodyguards is Bo, Nubity, Tarina, and Flory and Bo is an org, Nubity is a dwarf, Tarina is my brain is slowly dying yeah Tarina is a troll and Flory is our friendly neighborhood gnome and basically, we got we got these five bodyguards. Meanwhile, we know that something bad is going to happen at the Celestial Festival, which is when uh, the very famous Vacker is performing this light switch thing. And he happens to be the son of Lucia Vacker, who is being really, really suspicious, and who is the one who built Everglen. And after that, well, Fitzby kind of finally gets official, and then we get hit with the news of, Frick, dude, what the heck? Sylvanie is giving birth. Oh my god, are you kidding me? And we, we have to go there and we have to rescue Sylvanie and basically Sylvanie's giving birth to twins and she's, she's probably not going to survive the birth and her children might not either and they're like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the troll, based, the troll on their team, who is Tarina, she basically says that basically the secrets of trolls being born is the fact that there's these incubation chamber things and you open... And basically, when the troll is born, they put him inside this egg incubation chamber thing, and then the troll grows, and then they, they grow up. And basically, we keep the trolls inside the incubation thing, because the thing is, trolls age backwards, and they get smaller as they grow up. And the primitive trolls are psychopaths and kill and eat things, and they're very, very uncontrollable beasts, therefore we put them in there until they grow and basically we're like, okay, maybe if we can run over there to a hive and put uh, Sylvanie and Sylvanie's children inside it, then we can survive. We can make the kids survive, which is really, really good. And they managed to do that a bit in a very panicked manner, and it's all good. However, it's, it's really not all good because it's, there's a huge problem. <laughs> and... After that is the Celestial Festival, so the, the Black Swan and everyone is working together to try to defend the Celestial Festival, and everyone's focusing their forces on Celestial Festival, and then when they look at the tracker, they see that Alvar is moving with an Everglen. That's really, really sus. So they go back to Everglen, and they go there, and they're like, what's going on? And they beat the crap out of Alvar, and we realize, oh crap, there's a troll hive in our stupid house, and... The reason for that is, was that Lucia, Lu, Lucia Vacker, whatever, that, that woman, the Vacker woman, had an alliance with the trolls, like the trolls were suggesting to Sophie, and one of those agreements was that an abandoned troll hive, with maybe a couple actual trolls in there, is still there. And we already mentioned, trolls are savage, so we, we kind of freaked up. And so the Never Seen releases those trolls into Evergun, and there's a huge fight, however, we managed to pull out a victory, managed to beat of the black of the the evil bad guys they never seen and we managed to kill one of the uh, shade and then we find out that stupid freaking bad guys never seen they've gathered up at where Sylvanie's children are 
And basically they're saying, hey, if we're gonna kill these alicorns, if you don't give us cow. And we're like, what? You dumb? Are you serious right now? And she's like, yeah. And we lose that bet, and they, they do take Tam, and we kind of freak them. And Tam's gone. However, Lin says Tam can probably take care of himself, and Tam is being kind of threatened to obey because they're like, oh, we're, we're gonna kill Lin even if we defend. Blah, 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 blah. They kind of search in Tam, and Tam is taken away. And then at the end, Sophie's taken to the matching center to try to find out if she has a match or something, and we find out that she's a matchable, mostly because. She, we don't know her birth parents, which really, really sucks for Sophie because she wants to get together with Fitz. And that is the end of the book. Part 2 analysis, yo! So, I want to really kind of mention how masterfully this book is done. I heard, I hear a lot of criticism about this book, like, it's really my least favorite book in the People of Lost City series or something like that. And I get why people say that, because in a regard, it feels so like, typical when it comes to the Keeper of the Lost City series because generally everything is so well written and this just feels typical. However, I want to point out a couple of things that's really well done within the book because it is a very well done book. So first off, there's a huge emphasis on two things at the start, uh, at the beginning half of the book. That's number one, there's an emphasis on trolls and there's an emphasis on Lucia Vecker. And the thing is, these two things are directly connected because Lucia Vecker's connection with the trolls is the reason why there is a hive within every clan, and that's the reason why that's a big twist. That's one of the big twists. And the thing is, it's it really it really nicely adds up because they keep putting emphasis on hey, I think Lucia Becker, something's weird about Lucia Becker, like what's going on, what's going on, and then also Tarina, the troll on um on Sophie's bodyguard team, keeps asking Sophie for a secret alliance, and we realize they're cooked, and they say, oh, there's another elf with a secret alliance, and that really makes sense, because if we can make those connections, then we can say, oh, Lucia Vecker equals troll alliance, and then if we stretch out one more further, um, Tarina also says that the born trolls, like newborn trolls, they're psychopaths, and they kill things, and they are uncontrollable, and we can kind of add this up, and this is what the twist is, so that's really masterfully done if you can put those things together, which you can't, and that, that's the point, unless you're like Sherlock Holmes or something. And then, okay, and another thing is Fitz V versus a matchable. So I told you how Fitz and Sophie finally get together officially, and then directly at that book, we find out that Sophie is a matchable. And we know that Fitz cares a lot about the match matching thing and all that stuff. And Sophie, meanwhile, doesn't really care about it. And that's like the one part in Elvish stuff that she doesn't like. And it's and she's found to be unmatchable. And I think that's really well done because of the timing of all that. Because we know Fitz B becomes official. And immediately after, we're, we're like, nope, no happiness for Sophie. She is unmatchable. And I really like how those two kind of came in correlation within the book and that allowed for that harsh impact against Sophie and us to find out that one of our favorite ships in the book is now possible. Of course a lot of people ship Keith and Sophie together and I'm gonna make my predictions about that at the end of the analysis section. And then um yeah and it's really good device it's really nice double impact. And I loved the tropical the the, the tropical? What? What was that? And the triple twist with the Never Seen, because the thing is, the Never Seen is really like notorious for making these really, really bad plans, or really, really like evil plans and stuff like that. And the thing is, like last time, every time we know generally what's gonna happen, and then it's like, yo, it it, it happened, but there's a there's another layer to it. That's usually what happens with the books. But the thing is, this entire book, we knew something was gonna happen at the Celestial Festival. And we were like, yo, what? Well, what's gonna happen at the Celestial Festival? So we thought there was gonna be a huge fight at the Celestial Festival, but instead that was like a red herring, and instead the entire problem was at Everglow. So I think that's really, really well done, how the emphasis one put on, was put on the Celestial Festival, and it averted our gazes so that we would be blind to what's happening in Everglow. Pretty cool, if you ask me. And yes, again and again, I do get that it might be a little bit repetitive for some people, however, I still think that doesn't change how well done this book is. 
And also, a couple predictions. Number one, Keith and Sophie, I feel like they're gonna get together somewhat. Because, um, honestly, I think Sophie is kind of forcing herself to like Keith in a way where it's like in her brain, she's like, I like Keith, I like uh, Fitz. And that's, she's kind of affirming herself again and again to like the t like boy. And meanwhile, I think subconsciously she likes and trusts Keith more. And that's what I think. Because I feel like Fitz might really care about that um, entire thing about the, uh, the unmatchable thing. And I feel like that might be a breakup factor later on in the series, which would make a lot of sense and why these devices are introduced. And it would add an extra layer of heartbreak to Sophie, which would be excellent. Not excellent, but it, it, it would be good character stuff. And also, uh, a little bit of a prediction for the end of the book, uh, end of the series. I feel like there's going to be some sort of judgment thing with all the humans on the planet. I feel like um, they're going to, Vespera and the bad guys, they're going to kind of make a machine that judges humanity or something. And they like shove in humanity people into, into machines or something and try to make like human elf people who don't feel guilt and like bioengineered stuff or judge humans, kind of like the final judgment in the Bible. And I think that'd be, I think that would make sense because considering that Sophie is kind of the Black Swan's version of that kind of, when, where she has part in both worlds. And I feel like that perspective that Sophie has is going to come into play in a series where maybe the humans are attacked by the Never Seen or something like that, which would be really, really cool. And that's my analysis. It's pretty, yeah, that's, that's what I got. And it is pretty well done. I will say that perhaps within the Keeper of the Lost City series, it's quite like typical, I guess, if you've read all of the books. But then at the same time, I think it's masterfully done and quite a little bit different from the rest of the twist if you look at it closely. And I wish people wouldn't send hate to the author because, like I said, it, it's up to standard. It's pretty good. And like always, your plot coaster out of the plot coaster, really good, but highly recommend it. I would rate it a um, 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10, which is really good in my standards. And well, have a great day. Flashback. By the way, I don't like that title. I think it should be different. But I can't think of the one right now, so yeah. Goodbye.